we're just gonna get right into it. But thank you so much. We finally got you like semi here. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard. It takes a it takes it takes a freaking pandemic to get people connected. Isn't that crazy? How have you been? Yeah, and then we finally scheduled a time and then we went all into like quarantine. <laughs> I know, I know. It's crazy. How have you been holding up and doing and everything? Um, I've been actually doing fine with it. Um, they, since they considered real estate like essential, we've been even busier than before. Really? Yeah. Because I guess people are bored now. They can't do anything. So I thought, like, I guess we're gonna go look at houses. <laughs> I, I just feel like, well, I guess empty houses. I feel like if I had my house up for sale for, for some, for, and it was on the market, well, obviously it's up for sale, it's on the market, but like to have people come in, I would be a little nervous about that. But I guess if it's vacant, it wouldn't matter. Yeah. yeah, we've had some sellers that weren't fully comfortable with it. So um, all the agents I've talked to are walking around with um, masks and gloves and Lysol and they're spraying everything before they leave. And yeah, so all the other agents and uh, my mom have been really good about that. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was going to be my question coming from a real estate background is how, how you guys were handling it. Because I didn't know it was deemed essential. I didn't know how it would be handled, but it's, it's cool that you guys are actually getting us those show homes. Yeah, thank God. Cause I was really, I was stressed there for a second when this all started happening, but it's been really good. <laughs> I bet. Did you know Jeff used to do real estate? Yeah, you told me that before. Uh, I thought maybe I did. did Doesn't his cousin, your cousins are something do it too, right? Yeah, my uncle, Tim Runyon. He has okay. Runyon and Associates, him and Anthony. Yeah, we like them. Yeah, my father owned that before he moved to Atlanta. He ended up selling it to Tim. We did commercial, and then I did a lot of, uh, me and my dad did a lot of commercial in Atlanta and appraisals. And for some oh. reason, I'm stupid, and I let my appraisal license go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Because it's very difficult to get. Yeah. Do you uh, do you miss it? Um, sometimes. It seems like now I'm, I think it would be fit more in my life than when I had young children. Yes. Uh, now yeah. I, we, we don't worry about the kids now because they're older and they can do what they want. When I was showing property in Atlanta and, and it was killing, like until it crashed in 2008, it was like closings constantly. I thought I'm going to live like a tent forever. <laughs> and then the market crashed, but it, but I was always gone when everybody else was home. So I was leaving her with the babies from five, four, yeah. five until nine o'clock at night four or five nights a week and the Saturdays and Sundays, you know how it is. Yeah. But, it was hard because I stayed at home with the kids too. So he was, I mean, I never had any time. It was, Oh my gosh, it was so hard. But like you said, now when they're, when they're older, mm -hmm. you know, it, it would be so much easier. And I, there was even a point in time where I thought about getting into it with him there for a hot minute. I'm glad I didn't. I don't really think it's for me. I don't think any type of sales is for me necessarily. But how did you get into it? Because I know when I first met you, um, it was way back. I don't know when. And you were the manager at Anytime Fitness in Cross Plains, remember? And I came in yes. the day. And that's the first time I met you. And I didn't. I don't think you were doing real estate then, right? I was not. I do want to say one thing before we move past that. You are in sales. That's what you do. That's what I tell I, her all what, the time. <laughs> you sell yourself and people don't. Like don't. what? Yeah. You are your own brand. You do sales every day. Yes. I guess, I don't know. I guess I don't really see it that way because it's easy, that, that's easy for me. I guess what I'm saying is if it was a product that I wasn't passionate about, I would have a hard time selling. Because you know, there's some people who could sell like, what do they say? Ice to an Eskimo? Yeah. Something that you don't need. I couldn't do that. I could sell you something that I feel in my heart and in my soul that you need. That's easy for me. Mm -hmm. like to push something like, I don't mean, I don't know. I just don't see myself. You that need way. a house. You do need a house. Yeah. And I'm not a salesperson either. So I feel you. I get really awkward. When I'm trying to sell something. I'm like, this is not me naturally. But with real estate, I'm like, it's not sales. I'm more of a matchmaker. So like, I okay. listen to your needs and then I go find what you're asking for. Like, I do like matchmaking and research is how I look, look at it. Yeah. I guess that's true. That's true. I think yeah. Because I don't know the houses. Before I go into them, a lot of them, it's the first time I've seen it too. So oh. I can't sell you something that I don't know. And I, there's no way there's over like 2,000 houses on the market. Well, not right now, but on an average, you know, there's no way I can know all those to yeah. throw a sales pitch at you. Yeah. It's impossible. I guess that's true. If you think of it that yeah. way and look at it that way, but 
you know, to be an all out salesperson and like go cold call. So I guess you, they probably do come to you, but, um, it's, yeah. So we can't cold call anymore because we don't have numbers in the system. Isn't that crazy? Oh, see, I didn't yeah. have any experience that because I've, I've been out of it since 2007 or eight. So we were mm -hmm. still cold calling back then. Yeah, yeah. That's well, then you were cold calling. We don't do that anymore. That's oh yeah. That is wild. But, but then they have, I mean, now you have, uh, a, a, a tool that, you know, Jeff didn't have and that's social media, right? Yeah. Thank God. So, yeah. And we'll, we'll get into that part in a minute, but yeah, you switched from, so you just, how did you get into it? Okay. So I, um, okay. Let's, for you to understand that I have to go back a little bit farther than anytime fitness. So, um, I used to want to be an interior designer. Uh, looked into going to UC, found out their program wasn't credited, and then State offered me a softball scholarship. So I decided to go there. Okay. And yeah, so then I got, I did business management, I doubled, I did business management and then a double major with economics. And then um, I was like, I'm going to open my own gym because I'm very passionate about like, uh, at that point I was playing softball. So sports training was kind of like my thing. Okay. Yeah. So then I went to Anytime yeah. Fitness to try to like force myself in the field to learn about it. Um, Ended up being a manager there. <laughs> That's a hard life, y'all. Yeah. Like <laughs> running a gym, especially a 24-7 gym. That's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. So it wasn't for me. Um, I lost my passion for it. Decided to go a different direction. Ended up um, somebody had hired me to manage an investment for them. So I left to go do that. They got really sick with cancer and had to pull their money out. So then I lost that opportunity. Right. <laughs> Yikes. So um, he happened to be a contractor that my mom was working with. And um, that just was like, you know what? I've always been interested in houses. Real estate's what I know. If I could write down what I, what I want my lifestyle to be like, um, like being able to make my own schedule, come and go as I please, things like that. It was what I was used to, what my mom did my entire life. So she was on vacation one day and I was like, I called her and I was like, Hey, I want to talk to you about getting my real estate license. And she was like, well, honey, I'm like a few drinks deep. Like we need to have this conversation when I get back. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. That's fine. We'll talk about it later. Hung up the phone, went online, registered for my class, art, paid for it, whatever. Um, she came back that Sunday and was like, let's talk about it. And I was like, there's no need to talk about it. I'm already, my classes start tomorrow. She was like, huh? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Took the class in two weeks. Um, my test was scheduled the third week after that. Um, passed it. So I did all this in a month. Um, took the class, passed it, passed the test. And then, um, this is funny too, the way that, uh, which you all know, but the way that, um, the real estate year goes, it, um, it starts again. I think it's in like July or something like that. So this was like in June or yeah, right at the beginning of June. So they were like, do you want to hold off on paying for your yearly dues? Um, wait a month. You can actually start working in July. And I was like, nah, bro, I'm starting now. So I went ahead and paid the 600 some dollars for one month. We ended up closing like three houses that month. So it paid off. Yeah. Oh, good. Very risky. But <laughs> yeah. I just dove in. I said, I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do it, it's now. Yeah. So I've been running with it ever since. I believe that's how you have to jump into anything yeah. you want to do. You have to just say, I'm going, I'm going now. I'm not, I'm not going to wait till that's what I told some people on a live we were doing recently. They said, cause I want to start eating healthier and I'm having her hold it to hold me to it. And they're like, well, when are you going to start like Monday? And I was like, no, I started yesterday about 2 PM when I decided it was time to do it. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah. I didn't bad earlier in the day that I started cause I'll be the guy that won't do it. I'll put it all. If I say I'm going to do it Monday, Something's going to throw me off. So yeah, I like right. That. You just go. You just got to, you got to do it. When you get that spark, you got to run with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, so how long, how long have you been in it? Um, I think this will be, I'm going on five years, four or five years. And you do it with your mom, right? Because I see you guys together all the time. It is so fun to watch you two together. I love it. <laughs> I Thanks. Do. How is it working with your mom? Does it go well? Okay, so, you know, like, did you ever move back home after college? No. Okay, for, neither. For like, two months. No. I did. For how did it go for you? Um, 
Uh, it was okay for for those couple months, but it was different for me. It, I was like we we're get, like putting a wedding together, and it was like I was moving. Oh, okay. About, so it wasn't like I was moving in and stuff. Okay, well, like I was coming back. I graduated, and then I'm going to be out by July. Right. So. Okay. Well. Yeah, for me, and I, I guess most people, if they move back, because I moved back home for like after college, like a year or two. Okay, so like the first couple of months, it's all hunky dory, and you're like, "Oh, mom, dad, I miss you so much. This is so great." Like, and then it's like, "Hold on, <laughs> what?" So that's kind of what real estate was like when I first got into it. It was awesome work with my mom again, and now I feel like I went to college and came back home to live with them. <laughs> yeah, I can kind so, of with you could, say I'm, what. I mean to interrupt. I was just saying I can kind of relate with you because when I I had an Erie Insurance agency. I, I had a real estate firm with my father here. It was really his. I didn't have anything to do with that. I had any ownership, but I was an agent with him and I was an appraiser, really an apprentice at the time, but I started an Erie insurance agency on the West side. Uh -huh. And then he moved to Atlanta and then he talked me into selling my insurance agency and coming and going into business with him in Atlanta and real estate. So I can kind of relate to the whole working with family. Mm -hmm. Like it ended, it, it got to a point where it was like, you know what, I'm going back into insurance because not that we don't didn't get along because we had a blast together, but my future plans were different than his future right. plans. He was like, you make your commissions, you spend them, I'll make my commissions, I'll spend them. I was like, let's build for the future because I have kids, you know, but he, so we kind of butted heads on philosophy and I mean, we never were ugly we're very close but it, I, I can relate to you it's a little different working with you. yeah it's hard and where she's been doing it for like 30 years she is very set in her ways which she should be because she's killed it the entire time mm -hmm. so she's very set in her ways and I come in like I have all these new fresh ideas and it just sometimes we just can't like it's but it, it works great and I wouldn't trade it for anything this is the you can't go to school and learn this knowledge like 30 years of experience you can't do it so i'm hanging on her i hate to say it but i'm hanging on her coattail learning as much as i can because i don't want to make the mistakes that had to be made to get her to where she is yeah how does she do, how does she deal with the social media aspect of it because you're big into social media which i absolutely love because so am i and i i see her role with it great but how does she because it's different because she probably wasn't used to that i don't know if she was into social media before you jumped on or actually when you first jumped on yeah. social media that, like, how huge it is as it is now but how does she deal with that does she she like it i know she rolls with it but hold on it was breaking up for a second so uh you were saying that you know she rolls with it but how does she really handle it yes okay um <laughs> at first she was not about it and she hated it like the first laugh we did she was like i'm gonna kill you <laughs> <laughs> yeah but now she's like to the point where she's used to it she understands it now um she still leaves it up to me to like kind of run with it but like the other day she was like we need to do a lap video we haven't done one in a while and i'm like okay so now she's all about it and on board with it good because she but, i mean it took five years to get her there if we're being realistic <laughs> yeah because she probably sees now how even more than five years ago how almost everything especially a lot of sales is social media driven because people live on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, even Snapchat now. Now we're going to TikTok, right? So it's on, yeah. so social media driven. And that's where I can relate because I've gained most of my clients to work for social media. I wouldn't have nearly the clientele. I wouldn't have nearly the advertising opportunities that I have. So it's a huge thing in sales, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And which oh, yeah. I the think first thing people do is they pick up their phone to yeah. research anything. Absolutely. Well, and that's what I, I do a lot of consulting because I, I work with agencies now and I do a lot of consultings and sales coaching. And that's what I was talking to one of my guys today about. He's a younger guy, so he gets it. And I'm like, you've got to get on all these platforms and you got to be you. Because he's like, I can't do social media with insurance. And I go, I know you can. It sucks. Nobody's going to You watch. can. Yeah, but wow. my thing is, is the way it's moving is I said, you've got to be you and sell you. And then people want to know what you do. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and you have the information there for them to get to and to buy from you. But you need to be putting content out there, no matter what kind of content. But you need to be putting content out there so people feel like they know you, even though they've never met you. Right. That way, yeah, if you you're approach right. them, if you see them put something on Facebook about needing to move, you can, can contact them and go, 
you sell houses? Right. I've been watching your, your Instagram for three years. You know, it's just, it's like, that's kind of the wave now. It's like, you've got to create, Margaret has to be a brand. Right. Yeah. And people got to love that. And then they're going to use you no matter what you do. And I think it's cool too, because I want to shift now. Um, you are also in sales with Mary Kay, right? Uh, yes. Consulting. Mm-hmm. And I think it's cool that you can, you, you it, like you can bleed those two together and you, that's what makes you, like, you know what I mean? When you think makeup and you think real estate, I immediately think, you, you know what I'm, who you are because you're so much out there on social media. So you can use that platform for both of your businesses and your passions, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I love that. And if it weren't for it, I don't know what I would be doing right now, especially right now and all this time that we're in, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and like we were saying before, like how you said, you're not a salesperson. Well, I'm not either. So the only thing, the thing I'm good at is creating interest in things like how you were good at creating interest in like your workout programs and what you're doing and like your TikToks and stuff. Right. So the same thing with Mary Kay, I could not sit down with somebody face to face and sell them any Mary Kay at all. I'm the worst. But if I use it enough and create interest, like you, like you said, on social media, then, I mean, it's a wrap. Yep. Done. Yeah. Over. I, I love that. I, I don't know where, I, like I said, I don't know where I would be without it at all. And, and it's funny because, you know, all these different um, social media platforms are coming out. You know, the first with this TikTok or whatever, Jeff and I used it as joking around, like just to have fun. Brooke talked me into getting it. She's like, mom, you'd be really good. You should do one. I'm like, whatever let me sign up i i was on the account for like two months and never used it well now it's like i've created we've jeff and i both have created this like huge community and so like i go live every day at noon and talk yeah, about nutrition and it's like you don't realize how many people you can reach she has people signed up for her today for her monthly fees and then loan her money you know because they're just people that attend our live we're not even talking about business, you know really oh you do an online course now like this with the zoom so now they're just jumping in and then so now that you're, you've got 20 some 25 thousand followers you get any you know a small percentage of that to pay and do your courses online well what i was saying is with you specifically i mean you could you you've gone live before so you're comfortable in front of a camera you could click, click on that live i think you have to have a thousand followers first which you may or i don't i didn't see it but you click on that live and just do a makeup oh. tutorial. You know what I'm saying? You're giving your time up for free a little bit, but in the, in the long run, you might get something out of it. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I don't know where I got. Yeah. I'm just talking um, about I hadn't, um, bef- yesterday, cause I wanted to at least know what y'all had done before I got on this call with you all. So I went through your TikToks and like added you both and was going through all your stuff. Yeah. You all have like, I mean, y'all stuff has gone viral, like, I multiple know, times. I know. That's it's, crazy. It's crazy. I don't know if you saw the one, not to get off on TikTok, but it, I don't know if you saw the one that Jeff did about the dishes. Like, 800 and some people used our voices to do, redo the video, which was really weird. To, like, look at, watch a video, and it's, like, two people right. that you know, and your voices are coming out of their mouth. I'm like, what's happening right now? And I'm just at the same time. I get to do, a, like, a... It took me a minute to make up some stupid the baby spiff, you know, like crazy. Yeah. Where I'm about dishes because we're I'm always doing that with the girls anyways. The filthy music, I'm always making up stupid raps to it. And for <laughs> some reason, people, a lot of people make that they they make fun of you, which is it just gets me excited. I I like that confrontation. It's kind of fun. I don't get ugly back, but I just kind of makes me laugh. We gotta have, yeah. we gotta have thick skin at first. I got real offended because people kept calling me Karen, and I kept getting really offended because when I looked up what Karen was, I was like, "Well, shoot, <laughs> I do fit that description a little bit." <laughs> but I mean, they call you Karen. They you you me- used that in one of your videos. You called yourself Karen. Yeah, yeah. I, I started using it to my <laughs> advantage, so I was like, "Whatever." But uh, yeah. But but we have, and you could do the same thing, like build this little community, a family. It's just really cool. I didn't mean to get off on talking about that, but. I just thought in my head, like, oh my gosh, she could do like makeup tutorials, like 30 minutes yeah. here and there because you're so good at the makeup part. Because some of us, like me, I can't put on makeup for like, you see me, you've been there. You're like, can you just do it over here a little bit? You're like, do it like this. Okay, I'll just do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, well, y'all are going to have to show me how to use TikTok because I tried to make a couple of videos and they were not good. So okay. I'll have to have you all. 
help me with that. Well, when we're allowed to be in, in the same room with you again, we, we can do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really hate this, but at the same time, I don't know how you're feeling about it, but um, it's this whole, I hate to use the word quarantine. I hate that word, but that whole, I call it stay put, stay put people. The SPP is what I call it. Stay put people. <laughs> We're down with the SPP. Um, it's really forced <laughs> me to slow down, right? I don't know if it's- Say that again. Me, it's forced me to slow down. So it's kind yeah. of nice. I, people are saying they hate it. I kind of love it because it's forcing everyone to kind of twist their focus from the materialistic things to like actual things that matter in life. So I think it's kind of a beautiful thing. Hopefully um, bad comes out of it though, like afterwards, like long-term. I agree. Yeah, we've had dinner with our whole family for like a week and a half straight. We haven't done that for, I mean, we do it every week, but it's maybe mm -hmm. like once a week. So it's been nice to like, it's like we're cooking every night instead of like everybody's doing yeah. what they can to get through the evening. Because she's training yeah. a lot of the time. Oh, right. Yeah, she's still working. And, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm never home in the evening. So it's been nice to just kind of be here and just be here been kind of nice and, and now I'm getting my clients to go back through virtual which is what I was going to say to you didn't you do the other um I don't know last weekend did you do a virtual like Mary Kay kind of party thing yeah well uh, my director um let it so uh, she's awesome first of all god love that girl touch her soul she's amazing she said she was going to run it for us we just had to invite people in so I literally just invited people into it and just sat back and let her do all the work and then we just um, kept track of sales. Was it on yeah. Zoom? Was it on Zoom here? No, it was on. Um, we or she set up a separate Facebook live um, or Facebook page for it, and then went live on the page. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. So it went well, though, right? Yeah, there were. Um, I think the final number was um, over a thousand dollars in sales, that's and uh, that's wholesale price. That is awesome. Yeah. It went really well. Because people are looking for something to do now because we can't get out. So I think that these these Zoom meetings and I think there's house party and there's all this live stuff going on. I think it's kind of neat in a way that people are still trying to connect even though we can't really all get together in person, you know? Can you imagine going through this and not having like FaceTime and cell phones and right? <laughs> no, no, hell no. I probably yeah. would have, I would have ran away. I don't know what I said. Would you, we, would you read? I probably. I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, I don't mind to read. But would you read? Like, it's like a foreign thing. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, though, is we literally read, even, even like the book readers back in the day without cell phones, just think how much we read every day, just social media, how many words we process mm -hmm. compared to oh, people yeah. who didn't have phones. Maybe it's not a novel, but I do remember when I was in Africa, for a summer and it got boring because there's nothing to do. I read, I haven't read a whole book maybe, but excluding that summer, three books in my life. Now I'm not counting all, I listen to audible books all the time. Oh. But when I was over there, man, I was crushing books. Like I was I, rolling, there's nothing to do. Just the last yeah. book I read was 50 Shades of Grey. I, and I, before that I hadn't read in, in years. I read all those books, by the way. They <laughs> Take a drink to that. <laughs> the, the only books she's ever read in her life. They're like, this is sex stuff. Um, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. The movie was horrible. Did you watch the movie? Oh, did I watch that movie? Yeah, I did. I did. I, listen, I, I love to read. I'm a big reader. Um, I cannot watch the movies after I read the book. Yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> I had no, nothing to compare it to before I read Fifty Shades of Grey. Then I watched the movie because in my mind, Christian Grey was a certain thing in my mind. And right. then when I looked at the screen, I'm like, that's what you came up with? That's not what I came up with in my head. <laughs> right. So I feel bad for producers who have to like remake. That's a hard job. Oh, because like, mm. somebody's not going to be happy. Right. You know? I'm going to pass on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing that. No, I am, I am, that is, I'm good with that. So is there anything else going on in your life? I mean, you've got the real estate, you've got the Mary Kay, you've got the fitness thing. That's oh right. my gosh, the, the, um. First form? The, oh yeah. 
Yeah. So you're doing that. You did this amazing, like, what was it? Was it eight weeks or was it 12? It was eight weeks. It was eight weeks. The eight week transformation. I'm sure uh, we'll talk about that for a minute. Then we can end with that because we want to take up a lot of your time. I'm sure that eight weeks, because I know firsthand that for you to go from, you look great before, don't get me wrong. I don't mean that. But what I'm saying is like what you did in eight weeks is hard to do, Margaret. Yeah, that that's crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, whole goal going into that was I wanted to push myself as hard as I possibly could. Like I wanted to see like if I could push myself to the next level because before that I wasn't good mentally. I was not in a good spot mentally. And that whole challenge, like you go into, you think like, Oh, it's the money or you, or you're going into it. Like, um, Oh, I want to look like really hot. But like, once you're like a couple weeks into it, you're like, wow, this is really more of a mental thing than anything. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's, it was a lot y'all. <laughs> oh, I guarantee it because people will say, you know, well, you know, they'll, they'll say, well, not necessarily you, but, I know that things can be done in eight weeks. I know I can go from here and here. Like, yes, you can. But do you know the sacrifices that you have to make? You have to give up this and this. you got to do this. You got to yeah. so when they look at the plan, when I say, if you want to get there in eight weeks, here's what you're going to have to do. It's just mind blowing. And it's not sustainable for everyone to do for the long haul. You know what I mean? But oh my gosh. Well, and what I did wasn't sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. But, you, but like, there's you, no way I could live that life that way. But you proved to yourself that you could do it. And I'm sure that was so gratifying and it probably. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then, sorry, it was breaking up again. What'd you say? I said it probably switched your whole mindset. Yeah, it was definitely an eye opener. Cause I was like, wow, if I can do this in eight weeks, if I had the same mindset with my job, with my relationships, with anything, like life would be 120% different. Right. So it kind of made me refocus on how, like how much I gave of myself to like all aspects of life. <laughs> right. And to put it into perspective, because people listening might not understand. So you, you enter a contest. It was first form, right? Contest. Yes. An eight week transformation. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They gave you a plan. They gave you the meal plan. Um, and they, did they give you the supplements? I mean, I'm sure it was protein. I don't mean supplements. You know what I mean? Like protein and things like that in order to, to get from where you were at the beginning to where you ended up after eight weeks. Okay. Here's the crazy part. And this is why I have become low key, not low key, extremely high key obsessed with this company. Um, the challenge is free to mm -hmm. enter. Okay. You don't have to follow their meal plan and, and you don't have to follow their workouts. Okay. So you can do whatever you want. Um, I, you don't have to take their supplements. I did just because I felt like that was, I mean, I wanted to, I sure. mean, $50,000 or more, you know, I kind of want to be a part of the company. So, um, I used their level one protein, which I'm not a big, I'm not big on like pre-workout and stuff like that. But so I did their vitamin packs and their level one protein and I did my own workouts and then my brother did my meal plan. Okay. So you don't have to follow anything and it's free to do it. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> this company is ridiculous. They're the most genuine brand that I've, one of the most genuine brands I've come across. Like I'm when you order from them, they even hand write you a thank you letter. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It goes into each order. I need to look into them because I, I need to find a new company to kind of like get into because, you know, I did um, EPI for a while, then I won't talk about it here, but it kind of, things got kind of weird. And so I, I divorced them um, and I've just kind of been jumping around and try different brands. I'm with you. I don't do pre-workout either. I can't like my body doesn't process it right. I get crazy. So I usually just do like BCAAs and um, protein powder. Uh, or protein mm -hmm. drink, and then I like vita vitamin packs too. But I usually do the GNC vita packs, which I need to get some. By the way, I feel, I really feel a difference when I take those vita packs. I really do. I know. Oh yeah. But anyway, I'm gonna check out that company. So. Yeah, I know Dustin Holston is. I've known him. For yeah. A long time. He said a lot of nice. Uh, he's always talked really highly about the company. So. Yeah, and I don't like to. Um, I don't. I don't like to put my name with anything that I don't back like morally. <laughs> Yeah. Like with Mary Kay, I had to look into them and the company and their standards before I decided I'd ever put my name with theirs. Um, so with first form, 
Like I literally have fallen in love with them. They're amazing. So definitely look into it That's for awesome. sure. So you, mm -hmm. so you won, you, can you tell you won money from this, didn't you? This contest. <laughs> I was super yeah, proud. They're, they're giving me $10,000. That is crazy. crazy. That's awesome. They said, here, I'm giving you money because you've reached your goal. Like, my goal wasn't rewarding enough. Like, That's, what? <laughs> that is so awesome. I was, that, that, was a, that was a great thing to watch, and it was good that you could put it out there on social media, on Instagram, to show people you can do it if you put your mind to it. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. You actually got to put the work in. So many times people think, well, give me the plan, and then they start complaining when things aren't happening, and you're like, well, are you doing it well? I mean, I'm, I'm trying. No, you got to do it. Like you're right. It's with that, it's black and white. Like there's no halfway. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. And honestly, like I, it was kind of shocking and overwhelming to see like the response after I did that. Cause I had people reaching out to me and people that um, downloaded the app It were like kind of rethought their life path that I never thought would ever come forward and talk about changing anything. Yeah, so because it was, they, yeah. they see you as a normal human being that did it. So they could relate to you, you know what I mean? Yeah. They could totally relate to you. So I think that's probably why. And that's why I like to tell my clients, and I do try to do it myself, you know, put yourself out there. A, it holds you accountable. And B, it might help somebody. Like somebody's out there that's looking at you as a normal person doing it. And they're like, oh, well, I mean, if she can do it, I can do it, right? So you just never know who you're helping when you put yourself out there. I know it's not for everybody to like put themselves out there on social media, but man, you really could be helping somebody, you know? Wasn't for me until it's TikTok. hard. What was it? Said it wasn't for me until TikTok, <laughs> and then I just lost my mind. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, like like Jeff was saying earlier, like people are gonna say mean things to you or they're gonna have like you're going to have haters and it's really hard to be vulnerable and put yourself out on social media, but you have to ignore, like you said, like ignore the ones that aren't about it because there's people out there, more people will be about it, you know? Yeah. So it's just, just ignore it. You got to have thick skin to be on social media. Oh, you absolutely do. And especially with TikTok. I mean, like, like Jeff said, it, our, his, his, one of his goals in 2020, which I, then I adopted as well was to, not really care what people think, not in the sense of like, I don't care what you think, but in the sense of like, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't, it doesn't matter if you like it. It doesn't matter what you're going to say about it. If I want to get on TikTok and dance, I'm going to do it. And if you think it's not good, I don't care. Like that kind of thing. I've know? always been yeah. super, I've always been super self-conscious kind of about any videos I would do, even for Instagram. I would, I would nitpick them to the point where I would just end up not posting them. I was so frustrating. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's taught me over the years, just go. Like that whole thing, just I'm good. I'm good at taking risks in business and, and doing things that could end me just because there's a good risk or there's, there yeah. could be a great reward. But, but putting myself out there where a bunch of people can see me and criticize me, I've never been good at. But this year, I'm just like, whatever. I'm going to have fun. The people that are going to like me are going to like me. They're going to see somebody genuine. And if they don't like it, they don't, they don't have to. It's fine. Yeah. But it's free. Oh, it's yeah. kind of like this release in it. That's nice. And yeah. TikTok's the place to do it because it's really not your mainstream business stuff. It's not yeah. right. Facebook. There's not many people on there that we actually know from our community. Except like I know well, you're yeah. on there now and there's a couple people, but well, not there people. are, you just don't realize it until you well, show true. up at the gym and they start <laughs> talking about you. Or like, hey, I saw your TikTok. <laughs> yes. Or people pop on there that work with you or just are creeping you know which is fine it's cool but yeah I just tell them I'm like this is a place where I'm an idiot so if you, you hear me use language you don't like or you hear me or you see me dance like a fool and I look like an idiot don't pull your business it's TikTok yeah, yeah right, it, don't it, pull your business it's fine <laughs> it's funny because it is a platform form where it, it we kind of use it and this is what we use our podcast for is it, it's a place to get away from like all my social media is normally fitness so it's a place for me to get away and do something that's not necessarily fitness related. Sometimes, you know, I'll throw fitness in there, but it's kind of nice, you know? And I saw you're thinking about possibly doing a podcast, right? Yeah, well, I just threw it out there. Me and my friend, after a few beers, were like, let's do a podcast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you should. Well, it's we're easy. gonna we're gonna do a trial run tomorrow to see how it goes and then go from there. But I get like, listen, I'm the queen of insecurity. Um, I can't tell you how many videos, like back to like 
using TikTok as an example. I've done videos on TikTok and then like you said, Jeff, like looked at it over and over and over again. And then I went and deleted it like within 30 minutes. Oh man. So, so my goal this year is to stop being so freaking insecure. That's what and put I put myself did. out there more. It's That's hard. what I did. It's just easier if you tell somebody. So that like she tells me, she's like, when I start to like I did a video today and she's and I was like, it's just not I can't do this right now. It's just not good enough. I need it needs to be I need to get it tighter. And she's like, just freaking post it. Just it's go, content. It's you know, content. get the content out there. And I admire that because I don't have that within me. <laughs> it, it's 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 hard. I'm like you, it's hard for me. But if you the podcast stuff, don't feel feel free to get in touch with me or her or us because we have like I know I'm I've been we've been on for two years, so I can show you the, the service we use it automatically uploads it to all the platforms like Apple and iHeartRadio and all that stuff to make it easy if you decide to do it. And editing. Okay. I just I'm very basic. It's very simple. Yeah. There's nothing really difficult. I can have this one up. Well, this one's different because we've never done one on Zoom, but if we do it on our normal setup, I can literally before I get up have it edited and posted everywhere if I wanted to yeah. and usually I do because you can schedule them out I could have 10 and have them scheduled out every other day for you know two weeks so it's um, kind of nice see so the editing part intimidates me <laughs> yeah it's you don't edit that's my that's my make it raw make it make it you yeah don't edit it don't try to edit anything out just the only start all I do is I take music and I add it at the beginning or like for this one we'll record an intro and I'll splice it at the beginning but all I do is I found music and I put it at the beginning and the end and bam it's done the only time we edit really is if we get into something with somebody um and they're like oh I didn't want to talk about that because we don't plan before this I mean like with you we didn't send you questions we just said these are basically what we're going to talk about who knows what we'll talk about but there's been a couple of times where like, oh, I, I can't, ooh, right. you know, and so then we will go out and take that part out or, you know, it, sometimes we have certain podcasts and we have a little bit too much to drink by the end. And I'm like, ooh, we might not have should have said that. <laughs> you know what Mostly I mean? Mostly she said <laughs> So I don't feel bad drinking a Bloody Mary then. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. It's only seven or else. I, I, well, actually, I did have a drink before we started this, but no. We normally, that's kind of our thing. Was if you were here, we would have offered you a drink. We would have had a drink together, but everything like that. And then, but sometimes like our mouths will get a little bit too loose at the end. And I'll be like, I think you could have maybe offended some people if we let this go out. So maybe we should edit that out. <laughs> but. but yeah, if you, if you come over in the evening, we usually do, we usually do drinks. And um, I hope that you. <laughs> more relaxed. I hope that you do your podcast. Do you do you know what it's going to be on, or can you say it what like topics, or is it just going to be a random podcast, or do you not want to say? Um. You know, so the to. idea we have right now, it's not. It's definitely not going to be educational. Uh -huh. Um, it's going to be one of those we're going to throw topics in a hat, whether we know about them or not, and we're just going to clown around. I like, I like it. That's that's. That's the fun. That's the best kind. Because people, I yeah. feel like if I'm going to listen to a podcast, I know Jeff listens to a lot of podcasts. I don't. But if I were going to listen to one, I would want one that's going to be kind of entertaining, that's going to be low key, and I'm, and I'm going to laugh and have fun. And that's definitely what I would be looking for. So yeah. you have to let us know yeah. if you do it because I want to listen. I, will, I definitely will. Um, the hard thing for me, though, is I don't really listen to podcasts. I'm kind of like, this is a new but yeah. again, like if I'm going to do it, I'm just going to dive in. <laughs> I, don't, listen, I, don't, I don't listen to one other podcast. I re-listen to ours sometimes just to critique because I don't know if you know this, but my degree is in broadcasting. So I will oh listen God. back to a lot of, a lot of our podcasts to critique it. Um, but other than that, there's not one other podcast I listen to. So. Okay. So that makes you feel better. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. So I like doing the podcast because I do feel like I'm using my degree somewhat. I used to do radio. I wanted to do television news, but that didn't obviously happen. So that's why I like doing all the videos and doing the podcast and stuff. So it's really fun. I think you'll enjoy it once you get into it. I hope so. And the whole thing is it's more for me and my friend than it is for anybody else. So if it yeah. doesn't pop off and that's fine, because the whole thing is just for us to have fun. So that's whatever funny you say that because that's how we started this it was like you know what we sit out here every night and we chat and we act stupid let's podcast and like have something that's help you know that's for us that we can get away right. and lock ourselves in a back room 
in the closet and just just talk like we normally do. And that's when everybody is like, you guys really talk to each other like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, people yeah. say, are you guys really like that in real life? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Like you're just in, you just get a taste of it, you know? And and we did, we just started it in our closet. We were like, we recorded it in here because you, you know we have the four kids and you've been in my house, you know how open it is. So it's echo. So I'm like, where, where are we going to go for sound purposes? So we're three doors in, locked in. We are in our closet, as you can see. Um, and so we just decided to call it in the closet because we thought that's catchy. People would be like, wait, what are they talking? I told my sister, she goes, hold up. What kind of podcast is this? <laughs> <laughs> and we, we wouldn't force you to come in our closet. <laughs> a lot of times. So I, had a, I was like, no, no, they're cool. So I sent her your TikTok. Oh, that's great. Oh, what did you say? Sorry. Remember the one time you were on live and I popped on your live and you said something about our closet or I mean our podcast and you said it's in the closet and your mom was like, what? <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, she did. She was in her little chair over there and she like leaned back with her glasses. She was like, what did you just say? And you were like, like no mom, uh... it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. So well, we won't keep you any longer. Um, I really appreciate you coming on, especially in these kind of crazy times. You are our first official Zoom podcast. So there you go. Thanks. I hope it works out for you all. And I appreciate you guys. Love you all. This has been fun. Yeah. We love you too. Love you. And we will let, you, we'll let you know when this goes up. And if you want to you know, shout it out, put it out there, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. And you let us know if you get yours one because we want to listen. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Thank you guys. All right, girl. Have, have a good evening. night. You too. Bye, guys. Bye.